Hey, greetings everyone and welcome back to another episode of Plan B Success. Who we have with us today is Joe DiCiara. I hope I got your last name right. Now, Joe has been a businessman and entrepreneur for the last 35 plus years. Bedrock Business Builders is his business. He's also a CPA. And then there's Bedrock University, where he teaches some of the tips and tricks of running a successful business. Other than that, Joe's an author, has written books, and is in the process of writing several more. So why don't we listen to Joe and find out what he actually does and how it can help us. Joe, welcome aboard. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words? Well, I was born to be a business owner. I'm, I'm certain of that because when my first business was when I was 10 years old. I ran a casino in my driveway and I made a couple of bucks and it just, the, the idea of working for somebody in a career never entered my mind. I said, I can, I can make money with my ideas and that that's what I wanted to do. And I became a CPA. My father actually tricked me into it because when I was 17, you know, he saw, he thought I was hanging with the wrong crowd and he knew that I loved business. And he pointed out that CPAs uh, run business, presidents of companies, and more important, other business owners go to them for advice. And I never thought twice about it. And so I became a CPA. And for 25 years, I, I felt like a fish out of water. Because if you know what an accountant does, <laughs> I was stuck in a cubicle. I was an entrepreneur wrapped up in a, in a CPA job. And 10 years ago, that all changed because I, I read a book called The Science of Getting Rich. Which, which turned my whole philosophy about business on its head. Stuff that they didn't teach me in CPA school uh, was what really made entrepreneurs successful. And I became a student of business success, and, and that's what I do today. I try to teach entrepreneurs not only how to start a business, but how to stay in business successfully. You know, that story about your dad, you know, I think he tricked you for a reason. I think he decided that, hey, this guy is going to be an entrepreneur, which is full of risk. Might as well get him to get a CPA degree where he's covered a little bit, you know, might end up in a job if nothing works out. Uh, I, I resented my father for 25 years. I was <laughs> like, what did you do to me, dad? I didn't want to become an accountant. But... Like I said, 10 years ago, my, my whole philosophy changed. And what my father did was a blessing. It was a gift because I would have never gotten the kind of experience that I needed to be of service to the kinds of people that I want to serve today, which are the 25 million sole proprietors out, solopreneurs that need direction and guidance. Now, I've worked with thousands of business owners over the last 35 years. And what I've learned is, is a little disturbing that most new businesses fail. They don't fail for the reasons that we think they fail. They fail because of we go into them with the wrong intentions, the wrong expectations, and my mission today is to help stem the tide of those business failures without spending a lot of money. You see, that, that's the thing. People go into business thinking, believing that they can buy success. Success is free if you, if you put your mind to it. The most successful people in the world started with nothing. They started with just an idea and the tenacity to see it grow. That's what I believe today. That's what I know. And that's how I run my business and my life. 
So tell me one thing, you know, one of the things that we see a lot out there in the media is all these glorious success stories, right? There's a lot more of the success stories, but the pragmatism, the failures, and then the lessons from the failures are not as many. So when you look at people or when you're guiding people, how much does failure and the lessons about realism play a role in actually making them successful? So I have a friend, Larry Brott, who is one of my mentors. He's taught me a lot, an unbelievable amount, in, with just a few words. Serve first is the first thing that he taught me, which changed my whole philosophy, you know, the, the way I looked at business. I took money out of the equation and I looked at my clients and I said, how can I serve? You? And my business went up 60% in the first year. Larry would, would go around telling people, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. And I hated when he said that until I realized what he meant. Every business owner, the most successful business owners in, in history, failed miserably time and time again. And if any business owner tells you that it was all a bed of roses and it was all, you know, paved with puppy dogs and butterflies, they're lying to you. What Larry meant was that we fail first and then we tweak it and then we fail again and we tweak it again. And we fail and we tweak until we get the right formula. It doesn't happen overnight. So then I understood the concept of fail fast. We want to fail quickly and as inexpensively as possible. And there's a lot of ways to do that. But what I teach people is don't expect your, your idea to work the way you want it to, because it's not. It never does. And if you go into business with that that knowledge, then you got a chance. You have a chance to succeed. Absolutely. So when you look back at your own career, your CPA days, so to speak, what would you attribute as the lessons that you learned there which are being useful today? Oh, there's so many. You know, first lesson is to don't ever give up. You know, failing doesn't mean you, you failed. Let me be clear on that. Failing does not mean you're a failure or that you failed. Mm -hmm. Failing is part of being successful. There's no way around that. So you don't give up, be tenacious, and focus. You know, this comes from Napoleon Hill and Andrew Carnegie. The more you could focus, the more you could stick with it, the greater your chances of success. I have started and thrown away ideas because I didn't know this concept. I was doing paperless file systems when scanners first came out. I spent $35,000 on a big scanner that you could pay $100 for today. After a year, I, I lost $50,000 and I said, oh, this isn't going to work. Had I stayed with that, I was five years ahead of my time. And I didn't stay with it. And what I did was I got a $50,000 lesson mm -hmm. on not giving up. So what kind of uh, clients do you work with today? I'm glad you asked that because uh, up until about a year ago, I went with established companies, corporations that have been in, in business for a while. 
or people that wanted to start a business and I would incorporate them. And so I was typically a corporate account specializing in tax services. What I learned about a year ago is that out of 30 million businesses, over 25 million are still classified as sole proprietors, which is the absolute worst way to do business. Now, I knew that there were 30 million businesses, and I knew that 25 million were small businesses, meaning that they had one, only one employee. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that they were unincorporated. That showed me that there's a big problem out there, and I'm a problem solver. I said, if that many people are, are in limbo with their business, there's an opportunity for me. So I still have my corporate clients, but today, what I, the, the segment that I serve are those people that are not aware of the problem of being a sole proprietor. And I can tell you why that is. When people go into business, the first thing that they're worried about is making money. I understand that. You gotta, you gotta turn the wheel. You gotta get money coming in. You know, I said, there's two things you need to have a business. You need sales. You need, that. you need to have a product or service that people are actually paying you for. Mm -hmm. And then you need cash flow. Well, something gets lost in, in, in the, in the process there because once the money starts coming in and they have to make a decision, on a legal structure, which is what we're talking about, they're not making the decision. And the reason is because it's so damn complicated, it's so confusing, and a confused person does not make a decision. So why is it bad to be a sole proprietor? Number one, you're overtaxed. You don't have any tax benefits. You're taxed. Uh, on your net profit, you're, what I mean by tax is you're paying Social Security, fight the tax on your net profit. Mm -hmm. You don't have any control over that. Sole proprietors get audited more than any other business entity. Sole proprietors don't get any respect from the banks, from the business community in general, because they're just sole proprietors. Once you're a corporation, now you're, now you're serious. So those are the people that I am serving today, and most of them, for, for the most part, they are unaware. So that's why I go on podcasts like this to start spreading the word. And listen, you don't know that you have a problem, but you do. And there's something very simple that you can do to change that. And Bedrock University, what is that all about? So Bedrock University is, is one of the platforms that, that I've created. Uh, the way to spread awareness is through education, training, and guidance. One of the things that I learned is that the market that I'm serving usually doesn't have enough money to hire a CPA, which is another problem. You know, they, and, and let me make something clear here. Out of the 25 million businesses that the, what the, what the small business administration calls non-employer firms, most of them don't make money. Most of them are barely surviving. So if you're a deli owner, and you're making 40000 a year net, you're not thinking about hiring a CPA mm -hmm. to get your, your business on track. You're thinking about how can I make enough money to put food on the table. So this was a, 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 a dilemma that I had to overcome. And the way that I did it, I said, I can easily create courses teaching people what they're supposed to do and how to do it and provide that information and knowledge at a very 
low cost. So that's what Bedrock University is. And it's not just me teaching. I have world-class entrepreneurs that, that are experts in what they do. And for a low price, they can enter the university and they can get, you know, all of my knowledge and experience in a digital format. That's fantastic. So with the current situation that we're going through right now, you know, which is obviously going to result in economic downturn and some of the problems around, you know, keeping business alive as well as resurrecting them at a later point once we get through this current crisis, what would be some advice that you would give solopreneurs as well as other entrepreneurs that are out there? How do they survive the current time frame, the turmoil that they're going through? Okay, first off, let, let me say that we are going to come out of this stronger than ever. And entrepreneurs, not the government, is what's going to save us. Because even during the Depression, more businesses were formed. More millionaires were created from the Depression than ever before in history. So entrepreneurs, if you're in business now, there is an old Chinese proverb that says, where there's chaos, there's opportunity. If you're a real entrepreneur, now is the time to buckle down, start thinking out of the box. Don't sit on your hands twiddling your thumbs waiting for the dust to settle. Because it will settle. Now is the time to start looking at your business and being proactive. Things that worked in the past may not work anymore. You got to start, you got to put your thinking cap on and figure out what is my business going to look like when the dust settles? What can I do to hit the ground running? Sitting there doing nothing is not an answer. There's a lot of steps you can be taking right now to move your business forward. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. I could give you a couple of practical ideas if you like. Absolutely. Please go on. So I could tell you, you know, I have friends that are in the uh, event business, and they had large events, mastermind groups uh, that were that were planned, and now they're not happening. Not the way they planned on because they are happy, because they thought outside the box, and they said, instead of me taking a loss, not only taking a loss, but disappointing all of these people that signed up, what if we do the event virtually? What if we use Zoom and we use technology to connect everyone? And you want to know something? That saved me $3,000. <laughs> I would have hopped on a plane to go to California to, to be in a two-day mastermind group that it was going to be canceled. Well, now I don't have to go to California. I can do it virtually and connect with a hundred of my mastermind friends. That's just one instance. Uh, you could be reaching out to your existing customers and say, how, how can I help you? What can we do in this time? You know, to help you with your business. If you're a coach, if you're a consultant, now is the time when your when your clients need you. You know, you could be spending your time doing research, finding out about your your customer. You know, looking at yourself, saying, you know, what are my strengths and weaknesses? How can I do better for my customers? What are my customers going to need when when this is all said and done? If you're, if you're a consultant for, for bars and restaurants, man, are they going to need you more than ever? So don't just sit, sit on your hands. You, you know, entrepreneurs are tenacious. If you're a real entrepreneur, you are thinking of the solution, not worrying about what's going to happen. You're thinking about the solution today. Just like we're doing now. Just like we're talking about business with I'm not you know sitting there waiting to do my next tax return 
this is something that we're doing right now that's proactive, that could help you. Absolutely. And I think that's great advice. That's really helpful where people can spend the time right now instead of worrying, actually planning, being creative and thinking outside the box in terms of how can they get steps ahead of the competition when the dust settles. What are some of the books that you're planning right now? What books are you in the process of writing? Well, the, my my head project right now in line with uh, the market segment that I'm serving is called New Business Mastery. And it's not just a, a book, it's a, a course that I'm putting together that's going to take people through the entrepreneurial process. It's going to identify all of those roadblocks, government potholes and hazards that not if they're going to face, but will face in, in starting and running a business. You know, it's not what we know that, that hurts us. It's what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. <laughs> so new business mastery is going to provide an entrepreneur with the essential fundamentals that every business owner needs to know. You know, from the compliance issues, you know, if you want to hire a subcontractor today, it's not that easy. You gotta, you gotta make sure you got all the paperwork in, in order. Uh, you know, what is your purpose? You know, a lot of people go into business not even knowing what they're selling, believe it or not. They don't even know who they're selling it to. You know, I went into business thinking I was selling bookkeeping and, and tax preparation. Yeah, that's what I do. But people don't buy that. They, they go to their account when they need to because the government says they have. So once I, I learned this, I started looking at what are the problems that my my clients have? What are the problems, the perceived problems that they encounter? And how could I, you know, package my services so that they see me as a solution? And, you know, these are some of the things that, that we do, you know. So right now it's the, the new business mastery. I also have a new business startup checklist, which I've written and I'm going to turn into a course. And now everything that, that I write and I do really is to spread awareness about uh, the pitfalls of being in business. You know, a lot of people cover how great it is to go into business and how much money you can make. And you'll be your own boss. And you know what? It's not all puppy dogs and rainbows. There's a lot of pain that people have to go through. You have to. It's inevitable. There is no business that has ever been started that, that ran smoothly from the beginning. So part of my job is to, to tell the truth. Listen, if you want to be in business, this is going to be one of the toughest things you can ever do. It's not going to be easy. People might, people are going to tell you that you're crazy, that this will never work. And if you believe them, they're right. But if you have the tenacity, if you have the belief in yourself and what you're doing, then you're going to be willing to, to, to go through the pain. You know, I, I equate it to like when a baby is born. You know, we birth a business. And when a baby is born, it goes through a lot of pain and the mom goes through a lot of pain. But once that baby is born, unbelievable things can happen. But it's never done without pain. Absolutely. And that's, that's what I, 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 my message is to people. You may not want to hear it, but it's the truth. You know, when you look at what you've done and how far you've come versus where you're going, what do you look at as a legacy that you want to leave? 
I believe I already have a legacy, you know, through my writings, through my, my videos. Uh, I'm nowhere near complete. Mm -hmm. I still got a lot of work to do. It's a continuous process that will never end. You know, I like to use an example of, uh, I took out a, a newspaper clipping of, uh, at the time, he, he was the oldest man in the world, passed away, this was like 40 years ago. I forget how old he was, maybe I, he, he was pretty old. And they, they took an interview and of, of, you know, they said, what do you attribute you know, your, your life to, you know, how did you, not only did he live, he was vibrant up until a couple of weeks before he passed. He said, I never stopped learning. I never stopped growing. There's never enough time to learn everything I want to learn. When he was like 92, he signed up for a three year course. Think about it. He's 92. He signs up for a three year course. And his friends, and it was a course on, uh, self knowledge. I forget exactly what it was, but it was about learning more about yourself. It's a 92 year old guy that said, I don't know everything I know. I want to know about myself. And his friend said, are you crazy? Why would you pay for a three year course? You're 92. And he said, because I'm not done learning. And guess what? He lived like another 10, 12 years after that. So that that's the kind of uh, legacy that I want to learn. Don't ever stop learning. Absolutely. Where can people find you? Very easy to find me. You know, you can go to my website, bedrockbusinessbuilders.com. You can find me on Facebook, Joe DeChara. I have a group called Bedrock Business Builders. You can join my group. You can, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to book a free chat with me to, to talk about your possibilities. All you got to do is go to timewithjoe.com and I'd be willing to spend 15, 20 minutes on, on your passion and your purpose and how we might be able to monetize. That's pretty awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Joe. It's been a pleasure talking to you and getting all the tips and tricks of how to survive a downturn economy at this point. What would be the one takeaway that you would like to leave with the listeners? Keep moving forward, people. Keep moving forward. Like I said, if, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. The dust is going to settle. And, and people like us, the tenacious entrepreneurs that didn't sit on our hands are the ones that are going to turn this thing around, turn the economy around. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Hey, I hope you liked that episode. Please make sure you tune in to Plan B Success Podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform. Or you could even go to YouTube or you could check out the episodes on planb.live or rajivmudumba.com. And please make sure that you subscribe so that you get updates on these episodes coming out pretty much on a weekly basis. There's three episodes coming out on a weekly basis. And take a moment to leave a review and a comment on any of the platforms that you subscribe to. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.